Hey everybody, could you use some good news? Well, let's start with this. Scientists have found yet another application for the amazing metamaterial graphene. Graphene, composed of a single layer of carbon atoms, has already been the subject of research in a wide variety of areas as scientists look for ways to apply it in the fields of medicine, electronics, energy production, and more. Now, scientists at EPFL, the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne, have found a new use for graphene as a molecular sensor. The EPFL scientists utilized graphene to improve a pre-existing method of molecule detection called infrared absorption spectroscopy, which reads the distinctive colors of light reflected by particular molecules. This method is unreliable when used to detect very small nanomolecules because the photons directed at them are so much larger than the target molecules themselves. When a specially prepared layer of graphene was added to the process, it concentrated the light being directed through it into tiny spots, enabling the infrared absorption spectroscopy method to detect nanometrically sized molecules. The scientists behind this project suggest that it could be used to detect the presence of various biomolecules as well as polymers. This study is published in the journal Science. Next up, a team of scientists in California has discovered a new way of structuring solar cells that could lower costs and greatly improve efficiency. Scientists from UCLA, working with the U.S. Department of Energy's SLAC National Accelerator Laboratory, found that by assembling components on solar panels to more closely mimic the systems used by plants to conduct photosynthesis, they could capture and store greater amounts of solar energy, even using low-cost plastic solar cells. The increased energy efficiency of the UCLA solar panels was confirmed by X-ray studies conducted at SLAC's Standard Synchrotron Radiation Light Source, or SSRL. SSRL will also be the site of follow-up research that will focus on how to incorporate this new structure into commercially viable solar cells in order to harness this new and improved method of capturing the sun's energy and converting it to electricity. This study was also published in the journal Science. And finally, the day space nerds around the world have anxiously awaited for nine years has arrived. Today, July 14th, 2015, the New Horizons spacecraft makes its closest approach of Pluto. Since I shot this video a day ahead of time, I can't show you any of the images taken by New Horizons during that close approach, but I can show you this one, taken by New Horizons a week ago. It's a little blurry, but it still shows us the surface of Pluto in more detail than we ever could have hoped for prior to the New Horizons mission. Notice the heart-shaped area in the lower right. We'll be getting a better look at that feature, hopefully, by the time many of you are watching this video. I can also show you this image, taken by New Horizons three days ago, from a distance of a little over one million miles. It shows the other side of Pluto. Notice the circular feature on the lower right. Is it a crater? The caldera of a great volcano? Who knows? Maybe we'll find out soon. Are you excited? I'm excited. I think it would be fair to describe my state of mind relative to the New Horizon Pluto flyby as quite excited. Graphene is used to improve molecular sensors. A new design could significantly boost the efficiency of low-cost solar panels. And New Horizons is finally about to reach Pluto. That's the good news. Even though Pluto's a dog, you're still excited about New Horizons, right, Adi?